The United States housing market is completely out of balance right now. In some locations, prices are soaring to levels last seen during the bubble burst that led to the Great Recession. But on the other hand, as Americans have been massively fledging away from big cities, traditionally hot markets have been cooling rapidly and home prices are dramatically dropping. The instability on both fronts is compromising city budgets and homeowners' and landlords' ability to meet their mortgage payments. Although some may argue that this is not a housing bubble, several indicators point otherwise. The Federal Reserve has been artificially inflating real estate prices with record low interest rates that are simply not sustainable in the long run. Considering that affordable housing is practically removed from the picture and there's an enormous gap between supply and demand, soon enough the entire market bubble can deflate and push prices to a sharp correction. According to a recent survey, over 40% of all Americans are already predicting the housing market to crash in 2021. And that's what we're going to investigate today. So stay with us. Don't forget to leave a thumbs up and share this video and subscribe to our channel to keep updated with the real estate market bubble, the stock market frenzy, the US economic collapse, and much more. Amid a steep economic recession that's been lingering for almost a year, the housing market has been proven resilient as an unprecedented surge in demand sent prices to record highs. However, the supply of existing homes has dropped far below the six-month level considered normal. Although realtors are getting numerous offers, builders can't keep up with demand and flipping is back. By analyzing the stats standpoint, it's not difficult to find experts comparing the current market to the pre-Great Recession bubble. In fact, debates about a housing bubble are now common amongst analysts, including those at Swiss banking giant UBS, who support their claims with charts evidencing how home prices are exceeding both wages and rents. Just like the housing boom of the mid-2000s, home prices are rising way faster than personal incomes. They've increased over 60% since November 2012, while incomes have only grown by 20% and rents by 30% over the same period. As a result, most homes are entirely out of reach for more and more buyers every year, the analysts argue. Similarly, the deputy chief economist for lending giant Freddie Mac, Len Kiefer, remarked how the national house price growth in 2020 was even higher than it was in the mid-2000s. In some states, such as Florida, in the Tampa metro area, prices soared by a whopping 10.7% last year, according to the S&P CoreLogic Case-Shiller Indices, and that's a national house price measurement tool. The state is seeing lots of out-of-state residents moving in since the burst of the health crisis. At the beginning of this month, Florida Realtors released numbers for January that show the average sales price for a single-family home in Pinellas was $309,450, compared to $265,000 in January 2020. Conversely, nearly 2.1 million homeowners remained 90 or more days delinquent on their mortgages at the end of January, which is five times pre-outbreak levels. Even though some improvement is expected, recent forecasts point out that at least 1.8 million mortgages would still be considered seriously delinquent at the end of June. Therefore, despite the fact that some economists argued that the inventory-starved housing market could incorporate some of those distressed properties, that doesn't alleviate the impact for those homeowners facing severe hardship. Scott Brown, chief economist at Raymond James, says, How does this end for people at the low end who haven't had jobs? Their payments have been delayed. It's really unclear. 
Scott Brown continues, I think it's going to be a bumpy ride for a lot of households. The same concern is shared by the CEO and managing broker of Keller Williams Realty, Rachel Sartain Tenpenny, who pointed out that with prices rising as high as they are, homeowners who could no longer afford their payments probably won't have enough equity to avoid foreclosure. That is to say, the possibility of house fire sales just as witnessed during the previous recession isn't out of the picture, but that doesn't mean prices will be sustained at the same levels. External factors such as how radically the economy bounces back after the wide distribution of the vaccines, as well as the potential uptick in consumer spending, could contribute to push interest rates back up, which would significantly affect the housing market, consequently leading prices to a major correction. But for the time being, the inventory shortage seems to be the main concern. Unfortunately, looking at the math, even with the increases in construction, we're still running below just what we need to tread water, Kiefer stressed, noting that the construction slowdown post-Great Recession is a major culprit for today's shortages. He warned, I anticipate pressure to be even higher in 2021 than 2020. On the same note, the chief executive of Norada Real Estate Investments, Marco Santarelli, explained that the tight supply will continue to fuel the price bubble. For over a decade, we've had a chronic lack of supply of housing. We need 1.62 million units a year to keep pace with organic demand, but we will produce significantly less. We're about 370,000 units short each year, he revealed. Santorelli noted that the supply imbalance will only get worse as more than 140 million millennials and members of Generation Z move into rental units and starter homes in the years ahead. An out-of-balance housing market mean there are worrying distortions going on right now. Although some may argue we're not in a housing bubble, similar to what was seen before the previous recession, since the current surge in prices isn't fueled by speculative behavior but by a jump in demand, that demand has considerably increased, primarily because Federal Reserve policies have been artificially inflating asset prices. With the central bank continuously buying treasury bonds and other securities under its quantitative easing program, interest rates are being held artificially low as trillions of dollars are being pumped into the economy. The configuration may be different, but that is clearly a bubble. By making borrowing cheap and encouraging investors to buy riskier assets like stocks and real estate, the Fed is ultimately driving prices of those assets even higher. According to Robert Goldman, a real estate agent with Michael Saunders & Co. based in Sarasota, the bubble will get bigger and bigger until the Federal Reserve will be forced to halt its bond buying and interest rates begin to rise again. But no change in policy is expected to occur anytime soon. We had a 10.2% increase in home prices in Sarasota in 2020, Goldman told in an interview with USA Today. What I'm concerned about is that prices will continue to appreciate at 10% to 15% a year, and that's not sustainable. So, in the meantime, home prices will continue to climb practically everywhere. In several other states, such as Maine and Washington, prices are up by double digits. Even in cities experiencing major outmigration, median home prices in cities have not fallen so far, at least not yet. For example, in New York, while rents declined by 20%, its median home prices increased 6%. The same trend is being observed in San Francisco, Boston, Los Angeles, and Washington, D.C. According to Norada Real Estate Investments, San Francisco's notoriously hot real estate market has cooled a lot recently, but because the inventory of unsold homes has been so tight, prices are not declining. 
However, at a certain point, interest rates will inevitably rise and there won't be enough buyers coming in from more expensive markets to keep paying the higher prices. Either development or both of those factors could lead to a crash in prices. But of course, there are many factors at play. The moratoriums on evictions and foreclosures are also distorting the market. Evidently, these policies are needed to prevent a mass displacement of low-income renters and homeowners in the middle of a ravaging health crisis. But eventually, they will have to be lifted, which can cause a tsunami of evictions, as well as a significant spike in foreclosures if homeowners can't sell or refinance their debt. In that way, sharply increasing the supply of homes and as a consequence, leading prices to collapse. For that reason, the nation's most influential housing trade group sent a letter to the House Committee on Financial Services highlighting that any new stimulus package considered would need to include rental assistance and warned of severe consequences if it does not. In the letter, the trade groups pleaded Congress to move beyond one-size-fits-all federal housing policies proposing instead a rental assistance plan. Now, President Biden's stimulus plan proposes the renewal of previously passed policies for the rental sector, such as the extension of federal eviction moratoriums. However, the letter stresses this approach could put the stability of the entire rental sector at risk. We strongly support the inclusion of additional rental assistance in the Americans' Rescue Plan, the letter states. Without additional, robust, direct rental assistance beyond the newly proposed $25 billion, housing providers may never fully recover outstanding debt, whether through the eviction process or otherwise, and the housing affordability crisis will be exacerbated in the long and short term. This could devastate the industry and hurt America's most vulnerable renters. According to Moody's analytics chief economist, Mark Zandi, the apartment industry is currently facing an estimated loss of almost $60 million. And the letter describes this places a heavy financial strain on many in the rental industry, including the so-called mom-and-pop firms. Functioning under reduced revenue for almost a year has drained reserves, caused deferred maintenance and capital improvements, and placed many housing providers on the precipice of economic ruin, the analysis reads. Rep. Maxine Waters, chair of the committee, said it's urgent to address the reality that homeowners across America face a foreclosure crisis if Congress does not step in to support modifications before the health crisis ends, she said. And this committee will also need to come to the aid of businesses and their workers who are barely staying afloat, including small businesses, minority-owned businesses, and sectors hit hard, like the airlines. With all that in mind, it is understandable why more than half of Americans believe the housing market will crash either this year or next year. Since consumer behavior is what drives every market, especially in the home buying industry, the fact that 41% of the population is predicting the housing market bubble will burst during 2021 and push accelerating home prices to fall is particularly worrying. The survey performed by Lending Tree also found that 26% of respondents forecasted the same scenario to occur in 2022. And even though mortgage rates have hit historic lows, falling below 3%, 30% of the respondents predict rates will increase this year. Additionally, in the face of the recent events in Texas, many homes are now considered risky investments. The effects of climate change will impact home values too. 
Floods and fires were constantly mentioned as a concern last year, and after icy temperatures started to burst water and gas pipelines, 23% of those surveyed stated that natural disasters were a concern. In short, as the same institution that's fueling the price bubble is the one that can mitigate the effects of it, the historically low interest rate environment will continue to help the housing market to thrive despite the mounting risks. As chief investment strategist at Bleakley Global Advisors, Peter Bookfar pointed out, the Fed is solely focused on the virus. They don't care what the side effects are of what they're currently doing. Buying $80 billion of short-term treasuries? How does that translate to better economic growth, he said. Powell was so nonchalant about these hikes in home prices. It's just temporary. Tell that to the first-time home buyer who's trying to buy a home and keeps getting outbid. That's undoubtedly a very intricate situation, but the truth is it might take just one of these factors to catalyze a dramatic crash. A housing market crash can be incredibly devastating for those who are investing in the real estate market for future returns on their investments. So if you're among them, you should start preparing right now.